Hello and welcome to the superintendent's perspective. My name is Mario Salinas. I am the superintendent for Edinburgh School District. Today I'm joined by assistant superintendent uh, for support services, Dr. Anthony Garza. Today's topic uh, is, is uh, we're coming back to school from the holidays uh, and we're going to be talking about the, uh, the new Omicron variant of COVID and that's uh, our topic and will you tell us what is the latest on, on the new variant? Uh, Dr. Garza. Uh, yes, sir. So the Omicron variant is, is one of the, the new variants for COVID-19, and, and it seems to be all over the news. Mm -hmm. and, and from what we have seen, uh, it is a highly contagious mm -hmm. uh, a disease because it seems like we have more cases uh, in the county and, and even in the school mm -hmm. district now. However, we are seeing milder symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, I can tell you that the, the county is averaging about 40 ICU COVID cases right now. And in the past, that-, that The used whole to, county? The whole county. It used to have, there used to be about 200, 250 cases at our peak in ICU, fighting for their life. And right now we're at 40 and the Omicron has been out mm -hmm. there a few weeks already. But we're, we're just hearing, we're hearing a lot of, of uh, runny noses and, and a little sore throat for a few days and then they're okay. But they're testing positive. So that's I know, I know scary. That before the holidays, before we broke for the holidays, we were dealing with the uh, Delta variant and there was very few cases. You know, in this show, we kept saying, look, it, it, it may be behind us, but here we go. And, and it's a, a new, new variant. It's, it's surging pretty much like it was at the beginning of the school year. And, and you're right. The people that I know of from staff that, that have contracted this new variant, from, from they tell me it's, it's either have symptoms or very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. So you're right on on the severity of the variant. We've asked our principals to review the COVID safety protocols mm -hmm. from the beginning of the year, because what, what we noticed is that we got lax. Everyone mm -hmm. got a little bit lax, the mm -hmm. kids, the staff, the desk shields came down, the, you know, we catch it. You know, they're still wearing their masks, but mm -hmm. they're not as socially distant as they were before, not using as much hand sanitizer and, and shaking hands, I noticed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we reminded them, we need to go back to where we were in August when we started school. And uh, we were out there at the schools this week and we noticed that they have them sitting apart again. You know, they're not mixing so much, so. We're still, you know, complying with our social distancing, our spacings on our floors. Um, we are doing our sanitation before the students come in with their hands. They check temperatures in the morning. We take a temperature mid-afternoon just in case. Um, you know, our nurses on call, you know, every minute of the day we call her if there's a question and she'll come in and evaluate the student. Um, we do have our shields uh, if we need to in the classrooms. Um, at this time at our campus, we have chosen to have lunch back in the classroom for the next 14 days. Uh, you know, just as a precaution to make sure we kind of uh, contain our students in one area and not expose them so much to everybody else. Um, so yes, the same procedures that we started our school year, we are implementing again. Uh, hopefully implementing our protocols strict again, the way we did at the beginning of the year is going to help us get past this. When we started school year, I know that we're, we were really strict with the protocols. I know that we have mandatory mask, mask wearing still. And we're strict about temperature taking, strict about social distancing, strict about carols, et cetera. Uh, so we're we going back to that, at least for now? For right now, we're going right back to that. Um, we gotta wait and see what our COVID report card is gonna show us here in this next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at our report card, the way we ended in December, we were averaging 30, 20 cases the whole week. Mm -hmm. But now here we are with the Omicron and, and we have a lot more uh, cases that we're seeing. So the numbers won't come in until Monday and, and we'll have a new report card coming out and we'll, then we'll know for sure this is how many infections we had on, on campus or at home, but our students. I know that when school started in August, if, you, if an employee or a student got sick with COVID, the procedures were we will send them home for 14 days and then they had to test to come back to mm -hmm. class or to work, is are those same procedures still in, a, in effect? The CDC has updated those procedures and, and it went from 14 to 10. And on December 27, 2021, we went to five days, five days from when you test positive. And they base that on the science that the, the individual is most infectious on the first two days before the symptoms and three days after. 
And so they said, five days, if no symptoms, mm. you can return to work or school if you don't have any symptoms after five days. So that, that's the new guideline. It's, it just came out, and that's what we're going to follow as well. I know that we were, we were all of last semester, we were testing for COVID. We were vaccinating. Uh, are we still doing that? <clears throat> yes. Right, right now, we, uh, we started this week here at Central Administration. We're, we're COVID testing. And we're vaccinating with Moderna and Pfizer, first dose, second dose, and booster, whatever it is that they need. Uh, while supplies last, and I want to qualify that for the camera, while supplies last, uh, with this Omicron surge, they're ordering supplies like crazy all over, and they're running, they're running low. So I, I know that we ran out of tests this week because a lot of people wanted to get tested, and, and they were getting tested. And, I think it's a great opportunity for our staff to ensure that they get tested before they come uh, back to work. It's a great resource. I know the teachers were asking yesterday when we were welcoming them back, you know, can we test there because the lines are ridiculously long at clinics. So it's a great resource for our staff and students. We always like uh, to keep the safety of our students as a priority. Um, if they don't feel well, please, uh, we do encourage testing. Um, call the campus if you have any questions. Our administration and nurses are ready to answer any questions or doubts. Of course, you leave your kids with us with the ex expectation of us taking care of them, and that's our number one goal. I know on Monday we had, a, at, at Robert Vela High School, we had a testing site. Mm -hmm. How many students and staff did we test? We tested community? approximately 1,000 people on Monday, uh, January 3rd at Robert Vela. Mm -hmm. And then after that, in the next two days... Mostly we, students and staff? Mostly, mostly students and staff. And I can tell you right now, our new rule is only ECISD students and staff. We cannot accommodate the, the community right now when we have students and staff in need. I mean, we, we ran out this week. Mm -hmm. We've got some in order, and as soon as they come back, we'll hit the ground running again on the testing. I decided to test my children because uh, it's a precautionary measure. And so I want to be safe for them and also for all the children at Eisenhower. It's very important to get tested regularly because first of all, you gotta think, you know, they tested negative one day and you never know within the next few days they can contract it. And so just to play it safe, you wanna go ahead and test uh, regularly to make sure that everything's fine. Well, I think this is extremely helpful. Um, it's available to us. We just have to make the time. And so we're very lucky it's available to us. Uh, the CDC also says if you're exposed to someone that is COVID positive, you have to quarantine for five days as well. Regardless of vaccination status? Actually, no. Vaccine or no vaccine. But if you're vaccine and boosted, the keyword is boosted, mm -hmm. and no symptoms, you don't have to quarantine at all. You can continue coming to school. So that being said, is we, we highly recommend, and the CDC does, mm -hmm. that you get your booster vaccine. I know they have them at CVS and Walgreens, even Walmart, uh, but we have them here and, and go to where, uh, wherever you need to go to, to get it. But the booster is very important and it'll keep you coming to school and to work. How about if there's a, a case where we have, uh, let's say a student that COVID positive, let's say tested COVID positive, let's say Christmas, you know, that's 13 days ago almost. And, and that the, the students, we have their siblings in that same household, they have to quarantine even though it's if you're in the same, while. If you're in the same household, right, but you quarantine from the day that they were positive. So if they were positive at the beginning of Christmas break, yeah. you count five days. And, and you if symptoms free, they can come, they can, they're good to, to come back? Yes, sir. How are the attendance rates at, at the campus? More or less. We went out there to the schools uh, this week, and, and we noticed that the attendance rate is kind of low. Right? We're used to 90, 95, 98 percent attendance, and, and we saw some in the 80s. So we noticed we, we, just by talking to the principal and, and the nurse, uh, some of the parents are, are keeping their children yeah. at home on their own. Yes. They're, they're just afraid this week. And so I anticipate that the, the, the numbers will go back up here in the next week or two. Yes, it's like when school started. We, our attendance started at 75, 76 percent. Then the second week, we went up to 80, then went to 81, 83, and then... Right before Christmas, we were at 95% attendance, more or less, yeah. or averaging. And uh, because of the, the fact that the, the virus wasn't as prevalent, but now with, with this new Omicron 
variant that is prevalent in the community, I can see how the parents are a little concerned. And from the schools that I went to visit, they were averaging in the mid-80s uh, yeah. attendance uh, percentages for students attending school. You know, and to us that's important because we're trying to address the learning losses. And one thing to, to talk about is if they were exposed and they're being quarantined because their parent or someone is, is COVID positive and they're going to stay home for the five days, we have remote conferencing. And as soon as they notify our, our school and our nurse, they offer them that daily one-on-one uh, -on -one where they meet. What is them. remote conferencing for? Remote yeah. conferencing is uh, one of the TA options, Texas Education options mm -hmm. for uh, kids to not be marked absent. Mm -hmm. But they have to be COVID positive or exposed mm -hmm. to someone COVID positive. And when that happens, uh, w one of the staff members from the school reaches out to that child every day to make sure that they're doing their work, they got their assignments. And, and they give them their assignment to be... Uh, the, they're, uh, they're going back to the Google Classroom mm -hmm. and they're getting the, the work to them. Group. Some of them, they do have some paper packets if they don't have it set up, but 99% of them have the Google Classroom mm -hmm. set up. And as long as they make contact every day with them, they get credit for being at school. So, mm -hmm. so it's one of the attendance uh, recording things that we're doing. How about the, the UAL participants? Are, are, are they being COVID screened to participate in UAL? They are, mandatory? especially our, our athletes. We, we have a program where we do test them before the season. Man mandatory? We have it mandatory. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure, because that's a contact sport. Mm -hmm. that, you know, for regular school, it's not mandatory. It's optional. You mm -hmm. want to test, you can test. Mm -hmm. But for the contact sports, uh, we do have them test every two weeks. I'm doing basketball right now, and uh, I think it's going to help uh, like us stay safe and play more games. So that way we can keep the seasons going, because last year we didn't get to do that. Yeah, we, did, we just had uh, COVID testing yesterday, actually. We get to do what we didn't get to do last year and kind of get ready for high school. Uh, and if they are positive, then they can't play for the next game until they're Five they, don't they have, if they're positive, don't they have to quarantine at home? They got to stay home. They're going to have or, to stay home. Or at home least five days. School and Mr. Gaines. Or at least five days. At least five days and make sure they're symptom free. Mm -hmm. And so we don't, we're not manda mandating staff? No, we're, we're not mandating it, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Salinas, but, but we, we highly recommend that they all get tested at least once just to make sure that, that mm -hmm. they're okay, especially after the long uh, mm -hmm. Christmas and, th and uh, New Year break. It's great because I don't have to wait in a long line anywhere else and I don't have to go and sign up. I can easily get it here and it's just, I know that it's quick. I'll be out of there quick and I'll get my results, you know, quickly. Peace of mind, definitely. Um, safety for everyone, um, just the same way for them. It's just an easier way to get tested. It's convenient, it's close. It's, it's just great for everyone. I think it makes me feel a little bit safe. It gives, uh, helps me understand that I have the opportunity to get tested if I have any symptoms, so that way I don't come, um, you know, exposing any students or um, students are not, uh, you know, if they feel like they start having symptoms, they can go ahead and get tested, and um, that way they don't come to school, you know, infecting other people. So uh, also we were out there in the classrooms, and uh, we, we saw the kids back in school this week, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that there's a lot of fear out there, but there are a lot of people that are not afraid. Mm -hmm. And we saw some pre-K three-ers and pre-K four. Mm -hmm. we, we, we were in those classrooms this week with, the, with our media team mm -hmm. and they were practicing their letters and sounds mm -hmm. and they were actually had them seated apart. The little ones? Yeah, the pre-K three, mm -hmm. the four. And uh, I, I saw them going over the letter H mm -hmm. and the letter Q and, and uh, it was nice to see, you know, they're back in school having a great time. Yes, and, and the students, uh, when, when I went to the school, to visit school this, this week, they they were all anxious to, to be back on campus. They, uh, you know, we had an extended break, almost three weeks, almost not quite right, but for the students, almost three weeks yeah. of, of break, and, and I could see that they were <laughs> anxious to get back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, no, so. everybody, you know, in the end, the kids like going to school for for their, their classes and their teachers, their friends, socializing. So. Hopefully, the this new variant. Well, we'll go away just the, the, the way that we did with the Delta. You know, it, it started up high and then progressively week after week after week, it came down to like at a steeper than 45 degrees uh, to, to, to hardly any. So hopefully the same thing with, with this 
uh, new variant. Our COVID report card that we've been doing every week since school started mm -hmm. is going to be the telltale sign mm -hmm. of which direction we're yeah. headed. And so yeah. we'll be seeing that in the next few weeks. Yeah. This concludes today's episode of the Superintendent's Perspective. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and stay healthy.